been bullish and he's been right on consumer tech and fintech. He was buying when others were selling, or everybody was selling. So Pankaj, now that everybody is buying, is it time to sell some of these new tech and fintech stocks? Ulta karne ka. Be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. Now everybody is greedy about buying consumer tech and fintech stocks. Not really, uh, Nikonj. I think uh, I've said this earlier, we've had this discussion earlier. I think we are in the early stages of growth and evolution of these businesses. I've said this, uh, I firmly believe some of the leading companies of India over, over the next 10 years will emerge from technology as a sector. You look at US, the, Mag the Magnificent Seven or the so-called Magnificent Seven. Most of these companies are just about 15, 20 years old, barring Microsoft and uh, a few others. And they are 30% of US markets. I don't see any reason why, given the way consumers and business are evolving, technology will have a very important role to play in both consumer tech and on the business side. And I think, as I said, uh, some of these businesses will, will become very large and probably will emerge as amongst the top 20 or top 30 companies of India. Zomato uh, got listed about two years back or two and a half years back, and it's already uh, fulfilling most of the criteria being included in the part of the Nifty Index. Uh, uh, as a matter of the business uh, is already amongst the uh, top 100 companies of India in terms of market cap and as a business it, it's just about 10 years old. So I think the growth curve in these businesses once you reach some inflection point is very significant and uh, which is I believe that if you have the right winners on your hand uh, the idea or the strategy must be to just sit patiently on them over the next 5, 10, 15 years as these companies deliver, uh, deliver exponential growth. Reached uh what really could be called as a fair value point like Zomato has broken in the top 100 club. Look at the market cap of Ola Electric from the IPO to now it has almost doubled. Policy Bazaar at the current market cap is trading at P multiples which perhaps are difficult to fathom with. So my point is that from extreme fear now have they moved to the zone of not greed but to price to perfection. Yes, uh, they are priced to perfection if you look at it from a near term growth over the next uh, four to eight quarters. But if you look slightly more medium to longer term, as I said, one, these businesses are growing at a very fast rate. And if you look at, meaning some of these businesses are amongst the fastest growing businesses amongst whole of corporate India or the listed companies in that sense. And in many cases, I think the growth runway is much more sustainable. Uh, stock markets tend to price growth over the next four to eight quarters generally so uh, i think over a medium term perspective uh, one as this growth sustains probably there's upside to these stocks despite they being uh, looking fairly or richly valued from a near term perspective secondly all of these businesses have the inherent potential to surprise upside on the growth when you talk about uh, ola uh, the penetration of evs in india is just uh, meaning last year we sold a million evs across everything taken together in scooters now we are getting to uh, you know close to high teens kind of a penetration but two wheeler ev penetration is under 5% and obviously that will grow significantly over the next 10 years so some of these companies have a combination of being at the you know being uh, being the leaders in disruptive technology and a strong tailwind of a big transition uh, or adoption that's happening either because of transition let's say in case of automobile from ice to electric or where consumers are transitioning from uh, doing things physically to adopting digital doing digitally or doing a digital adoption and mind you, the next generation is uh, digitally native, which effectively means these businesses will cater to the next generation. Uh, the next generation, unlike uh, my generation, I don't think so. They will do a lot of things physically. Today's generation don't do banking physically. They don't trade in stock markets physically. All these businesses have gone completely digital. So a lot of these industries, I think the future is digital. I've said that specifically in case of finance. I think the future of finance is digital. Any incumbent old finance business not pivoting to digital or any automobile company not having an electric vehicle strategy are risking their survival 10 years out. So, and some of these companies that we're talking about, you know, they are really leading this transition from the front in that sense. So I think uh, from a, uh, as I said, to contribute, uh, while valuations might look rich from a very near term perspective, the next four to eight quarters, but still from a slightly more medium term, longer term perspective, I still think a lot of these businesses have much more upside for, for an in long term investor. So let's start looking at some uh, examples here, like Zomato. Uh, food delivery business is growing and the quick commerce business is consolidating. But 
where is this business headed considering that in the food delivery in the quick commerce business competition will intensify there is zepto there is swiggy there is flipkart there is big basket so don't you think markets are now just assuming that growth is going to be perpetual and they're ignoring the real competition which is developing in let's say in case of zomato and then we'll discuss the other ones well not really nikunj because what happens in digital businesses is it's winner takes all generally uh, the way these businesses are designed and where they operate globally as well is the top two or three players in any uh, vertical they make like 150% of industry profits because the rest of the guys bleed in case of zomato there is a clear case that blinkit has established a clear cut edge in terms of over competition in the quick delivery uh, space and obviously india being a very large market where grocery and retail sales are about 800 billion dollars we can easily accommodate four to five players so not everyone is going to win that battle but blinkit clearly seems to be one of those which is going to win that battle now if you put that in context and uh, of blinkit being a leader in the quick commerce and in the grocery segment then i think the potential value of that business 10 years out can be significantly higher meaning it could be equivalent of what a demart or alliance retail is or probably will be going forward as well <laughs> because the consumers are pivoting from uh, you know going to malls to having uh, this luxury of the goods del- being delivered to them at their home in 20 minutes or 30 minutes so i think the growth potential is still very very significant uh, in that sense and i still think that you know there is a long runway for growth for all these businesses when you talk about zomato's food delivery business mind you uh, their total customer base is just about 4% of india's population why can't about 15 20% of india's population be zomato's uh, customer base meaning possible uh, over the next 10 years i think that could be a probability in that sense and in which case probably the growth curve for them can be very long just think about it like 15 years back or 25 years back when hdfc bank started and we have made a transition from state owned banks to private sector bank hdfc bank started as a startup bank and now they have 10% of the banking industry so i think some of these let's say uh, businesses like blinkit can be 10 15% of india's grocery biz- uh, grocery uh, business in which case uh, the size can be very very significant uh, pankaj i'm also quite curious to discuss ola electric i mean it's uh... kind of the world's most expensive ev stock a little higher than even the likes of tesla and given the kind of uh, you know move that the stock has seen since its listing it's almost doubled in there wanted to understand how is it that you would approach it now for those who missed out uh, subscribing to the ipo well i don't have a view uh, on how people should play people who have not subscribed to the ipo and uh, uh, meaning i would not like to uh, comment on ola. plus valuation at this point of time but one thing i can certainly say aisha is uh, india is the largest two wheeler market in the world uh, and that market is now at an inflection point typically in automobile industry the inflection point uh, step comes in when you hit 5% of industry volume growth today electric two wheelers scooters and bikes taken together have reached 5% industry volumes and that's an inflection point so from here on i uh, it's very clear as a trend that uh, we will see a very sharp growth in the electric two wheeler segment which is scooters and motorcycles taken together obviously uh, the jury is still out whether ola will be able to retain its market share or continue to lead because you have a couple of strong in- incumbents there including bajaj and tvs who have a strong product pipeline but uh, certainly whosoever can lead that uh, space i think there is a pot of gold for uh, that company or investors in that company at the end of the day so obviously the jury is still out but so far they have done an incredible job i must say if somebody is holding on to let's say zomato ola policy bazaar and someone says that look i can digest uh, 20% volatility 25% volatility 10 15% up downside i can digest that if i can digest that 15 20% volatility should one still stay invested in these stocks to 3 to 5 years because these businesses can potentially be much bigger than what they are in 3 to 5 years and growth will surprise us nikon if you are holding nikon if you are holding all of these stocks my sincere advice would be to just go on a holiday and play golf and not bother about these companies over the next 10 years probably just check them out once in a year and just not bother about what stock market is doing golf what should i do i really don't know how to play golf <laughs> it's, uh, it's not late to learn it <laughs> i can see when people reach that critical uh, juncture of their life they start uh, playing golf you know a lot of hna investors have started uh, playing golf these days i mean i talked to some of the local clubs here long waiting how many stock stock guys now really want to start playing golf is there a pattern there 
I thought you already part of that club, Nikun, <laughs> so you have a better understanding than I. I like to report the members of the club. Let me put it this way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, appreciate your time. So nice to have you back on ET now. Let's take a break. It's uh, just been a, it's just been a you know super charged up phase for some of these consumer tech and fintech stocks from the throes of absolute panic a year year and a half ago. Now exciting times ahead in terms of growth, visibility, and participation. If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET now.